Okay, it's time to start talking about text wrapping. Uh, text wrapping is uh, basically um, exactly what you would think it is. Just having text wrap around objects and shapes, photographs and parts of photographs. What's interesting and important to be aware of right away is that text wrapping information is applied to the image. So you don't click on a text box and say, I want text wrapping. You actually click on the image and say, uh, image, I want you to affect text in this way. So it'll all make sense in a second. Let's just jump in and give it a shot. Uh, so let's move on to another page. If you don't have another page um, after our initial two-page spread right here, you can go to the Pages tab, which we may not have looked at yet, or the Pages palette, and click here to select this page. And then um, you can say New Page, and that will insert a page right here. So you can insert a page anywhere in your publication by simply selecting it and saying new. You can also delete them, etc., etc. So make sure you have a page four, or maybe it's a page three for you. It depends. And we're going to slide down to this page. And we're going to put a couple uh, columns of text here to continue our story and then do some text wrapping with it. So this is a bit of review here from probably the very first video. Click on the text box and then in the bottom right if you've put more than enough text in here you should see the little red um, linkage handle is red with the little plus in the middle and that means that there's more text to be seen than is actually displayed right now so that's a big deal you want to make sure that you never have any of these little red plus linkage handles before you go to print so it's a single click and let go on that and that loads the continuation of this story into the cursor go down to this page and we're going to put a column of text like so. And we'll do two. So we'll click again on this red linkage handle, go up here and draw another column of text. And you'll notice that the guides, the green lines are offering uh, suggestions that uh, uh, we may want to make these the same width. If we do, the bottom lines below the columns are telling us that and the lines that go up and down along the sides are telling us these will be the same height. So those kind of guides, if you let go, are good for business. That's a good thing. You'll notice that we don't have enough text to fill this whole column, and we'd like to do that. So what we can do is just double click in here and grab some more text. And obviously this wouldn't work if someone was really reading it, but this will work for design purposes. And we'll just copy that, Control C, and we'll just put the cursor in here and paste in some more story. That's just for the visual effect. It is uh, obviously a no-no to do that in an actual story. I would hope that's obvious. <laughs> um, so let's work with these two columns. Um, there's probably a few too many paragraphs here for my taste as well. So we're going to make some of these paragraphs go away. Okay, so we've got two columns of text. We want to bring in an image. So let's bring in something from our materials folder which is on the desktop so we're gonna go place remember file menu and place and we're gonna go into our InDesign materials one and there's a few extra pieces in here um, let's choose perhaps the nunchucks to begin and notice that it's a JPEG so keep that in mind we're gonna bring in a JPEG we're gonna bring in a ping okay so let's bring in a JPEG open and remember that if you single click anywhere it'll show you the actual size and this is huge, which is a good thing. It means the quality is there. But let's undo that. And then then this time, let's click and drag. So click and drag to establish a rough size. Let's keep it small, considering what we're doing. Let go. And there's some nunchucks. And let's position these somewhere, maybe over here. And maybe we'll select both text boxes and move them into the center. And here's an important tip. I like to always begin by putting any images behind the text it's going to wrap with. So right click on the image, choose Arrange, and say Send Back. 
this way you can see that the text is definitely not wrapping yet. It is overlapping the image. So I always like to begin by putting the image behind and it's a great way to catch any mistakes or notice any odd um, you know, errors or things going on with the way your text wrapping is behaving. So always put the image in behind if possible. Just a great tip. Now, how do we turn text wrapping on? Well, the quickest way to turn it on is to look up in the control palette area, this control panel. And whenever you select an image, the control panel should have these four little buttons here. There's a lot of buttons, but uh, for quick reference, this is the quickest way to turn text wrapping on. So this says no text wrap. And with the image selected, remember not the text, with the image selected, Go up here, find this other button. It's called Wrap Around the Bounding Box. Select that, and you've got text wrapping happening. Now, bounding box means the bounding box means the text wrap is happening with the edges of the box that the image is contained within, the frame. So if you were to crop the image, the text wrapping comes along for the ride undo that. If you were to hold control and shift and make the image smaller, it comes along for the ride. And the text is using the edge of the frame itself as the edge that it wraps to. That's why it's called wrap around bounding box. Now, when you have an image like this, hold control and shift, make it a little bigger again. When you have an image like this, you may want to do something a little more creative and fun and work with the actual image and ignore the white background, let's say. Well, that's what this other setting is for. It's called wrap around object shape. Now it doesn't work right away. Uh, we can turn it on and voila, no change. But don't worry, we have to go a little bit deeper into the world of text wrapping to make this work. So we need more options than just these four little buttons. Go to the Windows menu, and we're looking for the option Text Wrap. And this will open up, click on that, this will open up a palette called Text Wrap, and yours will open up like this. What you can do is dock it, meaning go right in here, and dock it in your palettes along with the rest of the palettes that you already have. Okay, so we open this up and we have more options. So make sure it's still selected. Select your, your image. And you can see now that those four buttons plus a few extra are also at the top of this palette. And we're currently on the text wrapping mode called Wrap Around Object Shape. But to make this work, we need to use some of these options down here. Wrap options, we'll talk about that second. First, let's talk about contour options. So do this drop down arrow here and let's look at what's available to us. Bounding box, same as clipping. This is basically the same thing we already have. The basic setting is to wrap around the bounding box. But we want to detect edges, that sounds good. Now why are Alpha Channel, Photoshop Path, why are they grayed out? Well, Photoshop Path and Alpha Channel require the image to have the information that is called an alpha channel. If you don't know what an alpha channel is, the alpha channel is an additional piece of information that can be stored inside an image that lets the computer know what parts of the image should appear transparent to be see-through. Some file formats have an alpha channel, some don't. This is a JPEG. It does not have an alpha channel. JPEGs do not have alpha channels. So it's impossible to use the LF alpha channel option. A Photoshop path is sort of like an alpha, alpha, ch alpha channel. And a Photoshop graphic, if you bring it in in its raw form, a Photoshop document, a PSD, you should be able to use both alpha channel or Photoshop path. Um, a ping. A ping has an alpha channel. PNG will bring one of those in. It has an alpha channel. And a GIF or a GIF. A GIF can also have this functionality as well, this transparency capability. So we don't have these options available to us because this is a JPEG. So the best we can do is to ask InDesign to give its best guess as to what it thinks the edges of the image are. 
This will only work with very obvious backgrounds like pure white, all one color, or very slight variations of, of a background color. This looks like a perfect opportunity for detect edges. Let's select it. Well, look at that. Let's zoom in and have a look, see what's happening. All right, so we're getting there. It's wrapped around the shape of the nunchuck. Uh, I don't like this. This isn't very much fun for the reader, but this is getting somewhere. This is kind of cool. So this is where we work with the wrap options. Now wrap options by default are, is set to both right and left sides. If you drop that down, you can do just right side, just left side, some options related to the spine or the gutter in between the pages. And there's something called largest area. Largest area usually solves these kinds of trouble. It means it takes the largest area and sort of creates an implied uh, boundary around that, meaning it won't let words go inside in between little transparent openings uh, in between the uh, image and the photograph. So try largest area and that fixes that problem. Very cool. The next problem or subtlety that needs to be fixed or spruced up here um, is the offset or basically uh, pushing the words away from the actual edge of the object a little bit. Because if you see that the L and the T, the U, the L, they're very, very close to the edge. Close enough that it would be unpleasant for the reader. And it also doesn't look very stylish to have it that close. You need some breathing room there. So that's called offset. So up above, this is called offset. And in this case, when you have largest area selected, you can only change it collectively for all four sides. But in some cases, you can click on this little chain and you can break this relationship between these four sides and you can adjust top, bottom, left and right independently, meaning you can push the text away from your graphic uh, differently on each side. So a little bit more space here. And that's starting to get there. Let's deselect to have a look. That looks pretty hip. Not bad at all. It's kind of cool. Now, what about even more fine detail control? Well, let's have a look again. Select your image. Double click. When you double click on an image that has text wrap applied, you're going to see this additional little blue line. That line is now the new boundary for text wrapping. It's the new object shape. It's no longer wrapping around the bounding box, which in this case is displayed here in sort of a brownish orange. It's now wrapped around the object shape based on that blue line boundary that we've established with all these settings. Now, what if you wanted to manually change subtle details of that blue line. It's easy, but you have to learn about the direct selection tool. The direct selection tool basically does exactly what, it name, what its name suggests. It allows you to directly select finer aspects or deeper aspects of a particular object. With the direct selection tool, you can kind of dive in a little bit deeper into something. So with it selected, if I switch to the direct selection tool and zoom in, I can now see what looks like a connect the dots. I'm going to hold the space bar down and move. And I can now see this connect the dots that allows me to manually change the boundary that the words are wrapping with. Now you'll notice there's a lot of anchors here. A lot of anchors or handles, dots, whatever you want to call it. And this is taking me a long time to make a very small change. So often you don't need all these dots, all these little connect the dots. You don't need them. So how do we get rid of them? Well, we haven't talked about the tool yet. We will in a future video. But this is the pen tool. If you click and hold the mouse button down on the pen tool, you can select from four different variations of the pen tool. And in here you'll find delete anchor point tool. So choose the delete anchor point tool and then you can go in here and very carefully make sure you're right on it. Delete all these additional 
unnecessary anchor points. And as we get these cleared out, what you're going to notice is that the text now wrapped underneath here, giving me a nicer, cozier text wrap around the bottom of the nunchuck. There's no real need for the text to wrap all the way down to here. It can come in there, no problem. So when you see things that don't quite look good text wrap wise, don't just uh, take what's given to you. You can go in and manually recreate aspects of this wrap and make it do exactly what you want it to do. So you have that control. So, uh, so you know, use it. Take advantage of it. Okay, let's zoom back out. Have a look. All right. So this is really looking slick. Let's bring in a PNG just so you can see that do the same thing. So let's go File, Place, and then let's bring in the Yin and Yang PNG. Open, and let's create that over here. And as you can see, this is very different than this graphic. If I turn off the text wrapping on this graphic, you can and uh, bring it to the front just so you can see. You can see that this graphic by very nature does not have a transparent background. This white is as much a part of the JPEG as the black handle of the nunchuck. But when you bring in a ping, and this would also apply to a Photoshop document uh, with a transparent background or an Illustrator document such as an EPS or something like that. When you bring one of those kinds of images in that has an alpha channel or a transparency path, uh, you will see transparency right away. So this already looks good, like it's already looking quite good. But remember that this is dangerous. It's on top of the text. And it's easy to just press print and not notice that there's text hidden underneath this graphic. So let's do what we did for our best practices, our tip with the, with the nunchucks. We right click and we say arrange and send it back. There we go. So now we can see that this is not text wrapping. It just has a transparent background. And that's what pings are good at. Um, they're not necessarily the highest quality graphic, but they can be. In most professional cases, you would see um, a professional bringing in EPSs made in Illustrator, let's say, uh, or Photoshop uh, documents in their raw PSD form uh, to retain uh, highest possible qualities and capabilities and still have this transparency. But a ping will do the job if it's good enough quality. And if it looks good when you export it and print it, it looks good. So let's apply some text wrapping to this symbol here. We're going to move it down a little bit. And notice that it is see-through. Even the white circle inside the black section of the yin is transparent. So let's apply text wrap to that. So open up the text wrap palette. And let's do wrap around bounding box. And once again, you've got the bounding box, the frame, the edges of the box that holds the graphic, establishing and dictating where the text wraps to. Let's now switch to the wrap around object shape. No change, but remember we've got to make choices. This is a PNG, which has an alpha channel. So if we go to contour options, there we go. Alpha channel is no longer grayed out. It's available. Choose alpha channel. Very cool. And let's do an offset. Okay. Just a few clicks of offset and deselect to have a look. Nice. That's kind of cool. That's a nice text wrap. If you don't like how big this gap is here, you could reduce the offset. Or you could go in, double click, choose direct selection tool. And with that and a combination of the pen tool, you could completely change the boundary of this object shape text wrapping. 
keep in mind you probably would never have to do it here because it's a perfectly round text wrapping boundary around a perfectly round object so it's probably just fine as it is the way InDesign defaulted it to. So let's stop there and in the next video we'll move away from using text wrapping to wrap text around shapes and instead we'll make unusual and creative shapes for our text boxes using the pen tool.